Last time on the poker vlog. Having us beat the whole way. OMC1, me zero. OMC2, me zero. But I'm a graceful loser. As he folds, we're going to move the score two to one. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Happy Face Hold'em. We're down here at Commerce Casino today. Wow, man, this is a good one. Our first hand we're dealt, we uh, don't even have the camera out. This happened again, last time we were here it happened. We're dealt pocket fours in the small blind. We flop a set, we get value on all three streets for a full double up plus some. Uh, it was just incredible. Here's a picture of the board, so it was great. All right, stay with me. We got a couple few more big hands going on in this one and uh, just excited to bring this one to you. Don't forget, take a minute, like the video, subscribe, hit the little notification bell if you haven't done so already. That way you're notified when I drop new content. And let's get into it. Buying into the Commerce Hotel and Casino Card Room's 5-5 No Limit Holding Game for the Max 500 after a brutal drive here in Los Angeles traffic. We doubled up as you saw in the first hand and looked to keep the run good alive. We looked down at suited Broadway cards, King Jack of Clubs from Under the Gun and opened the action up to 20 bucks with a bit over a grand in our stack right now. Our first playable hand but not in ideal position. I've noticed the games are playing much tighter and LA traffic moving a lot slower since mid-June. It's almost punishment getting here to play a session and like the best Christmas movie ever, we're a diehard, so we do it anyway. The button makes a call for 20 and after a small blind folds, the big blind defense for 15 more, we built the pot to $60 and we'll go three ways to a flop as Malcolm in the middle. The flop comes out deuce seven, seven, but with two clubs, and those match the suit of the two cards we're holding, so we must be onto something here, and we fire 30 bucks at these two players. The button must live nearby, because if he sat in traffic that was anything like the traffic I sat in, he'd be making decisions a lot faster right now, to maximize his time at the table. But he eventually folds, and the big blind makes the call. With the pot now at $120, we're heads up to the turn, which peels off another deuce. Last time I checked, three of one card and two of another beat a flush, and it's likely for a big blind to have shitty cards like these four on the board, so we check behind and decide we're pretty much done with the hand. The river's no help with an ace of spades. I've seen this trick before from players. The big blind gathers a bet of one third pot and fires out 40 bucks. He assumes I have an ace, as I was the preflop aggressor and he can have all those sevens and twos in range, so he wants value. But what he doesn't realize is I bricked a flush draw on a double paired board. I'm feeling good for my double up, I'm dreading the traffic home and wanting to maximize my time here. It's an easy fold. Let's move along. Sitting on the button watching the action crawl around the table. Do you see a theme already? Moving along like traffic on the 110 at 415 on a weekday, the hijack puts in an opening raise to $20. And looky here. We have red nines. Do you three bet this or flat? I imagine either play is right and balancing some three bets with some calls. But I actually look back at the Jonathan Little preflop charts and he shows this as a call 94% of the time and a 3-bet 6% of the time. Have you considered poker coaching? Check out the Jonathan Little link in the video description to get free access to all his trainings. It's pretty cool. Heads up to a flop, Jack A6 Rainbow not giving us any help. Watch how the hijack C-bets. Weird and large for the size of the pot. This is totally a fold, but there's a 9 coming on the turn. You know, I just feel it. So I make the call to just one bet. He's basically exploiting me here, so don't do this. So 115 in the middle. Now the turn is a nine of clubs giving us a set. Oh, that was just in my dream last night, okay. And this time the hijack opts for the slide move over the hop move for 100. And we admire the red nines before just surrendering. Okay, we're bound to win one. Third time is a charm, right? Sitting in the hijack, we peek down at a suited ace rag with about 1k in our stack and we open the action to 20 bucks. Pretty standard for this game right now. Two of the slowest players have gotten up to take a break, so the cutoff and the big blind both call fairly quickly, moving this hand right along. Three ways to a flop with $60 in the middle. We flop gin, six, nine, four, all spades, flopping the nut flush yet again here at the Commerce Casino. The big blind checks, and I want to play this hand just like the others. I open preflop, and I see bet for one third pot, hoping that these players are simply non-believers and flat with overcards. We can't be so lucky. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the games are getting tighter and slower, in my opinion. 
and I'm the only fish at the table. The dealer sends us another hand in under the gun, and we look down at ducks, and hoping to see a cheap flop, we just limp out of position. The cutoff, however, raises it up to $25 with $250 behind. This is a good set mining opportunity, and we call. The player in plus one behind us, he also calls with about 200 behind after he had limped behind us earlier. The plan here is to drill a set on the flop and get all the money in. Three ways to see the cards come out with a different plan. Three, five, nine, two diamonds. We check, and the plus one player is one of the slower players that return to the game. He donk leads for $50, and there's not much we can do here other than just fold. What do you say we try and win a pot? After all, that's the goal in playing poker, right? To leave with more chips than we came with? Sitting in the small blind, again, waiting for the action to slowly move around the table, the cutoff opens the action to $20, and the button, he decides on a call. We look down at King Queen of Diamonds. It's pretty, but it's gotten me in plenty of trouble out of position. So we flat here and just hope to have a flop we can continue on. The big blind defends and multi-way with four players to a flop with $80 in the middle. We double check our cards since recently we read our hand wrong in a prior session that cost us a little penny. And this is not one of those flops we were hoping for. Unless we were playing our signature 6-4 hand, the flop is pretty useless 6-4 jack rainbow and we check. Not even one diamond out there. You ever feel like the deck is just completely stacked against you? The button fires at this pot for $45. I'm pondering what to call this video and what story I'm going to be able to tell after starting with more than a double up and now struggling to scoop a pot. I remember that the action is on me now. What can you do on this board? Check raise bluff with little equity? Nah, just fold. Under the gun opens the betting action in this one to $15, slightly smaller than what's been typical to this game. Sitting in plus one, we look down at a premium ace queen of spades, but another out of position hand. All right, let's get this party started and scoop a pot. Since his open was smaller, I'm going to three bet actually a little bigger and we go for a sizing of $50. The action moves around to the hijack, one of the slower players in the game. And after some time and consideration, he actually opts to make a call for 50, followed by the cutoff that also wants in on the action. It amazes me to watch other players take so long to make $50 preflop decisions. But eventually, they all decide to fold and they get out of the way. Man, Under the Gun is getting such a great price now as the initial better in this hand, like six to one to make the call. So four ways to a bloated $200 pot to go see a flop. We need a miracle again like we got in the last two vlogs. Let's smash this flop with an ace, a queen, or spades. The dealer pulls in the bets, burns, and flops 995 two hearts. You know what the problem is here? I forgot to ask you all to ring that notification bell. With two overs, no back doors, and three other players in the hand, I'm just going to play this one pretty face up, and I check. Like going to the DMV, we wait for Molasses in the plus two seat to decide what he wants to do. Maybe he's sweet, and more likely I'm just impatient in this session, wanting to actually make a value hand. He jams his remaining stack for $140. I cut about one minute out of this video while Under the Gun decided to call, and we just fold. But I found this to be an, an interesting hand, so I kept the camera rolling since there's no more betting action. I figured it might go quick. The turn comes off another five, and the river, an eight, completing a runner-runner flush. Molasses shows pocket threes for the flop jam, and the player to our right who opened the action shows pocket tens to take this one down. Probably the most action hand we had seen at the table up to this point. All right, six hands into the vlog with five more to come. There's plenty of time left to scoop a big one, especially with how slow the action's moving around this table. The hijack limps into this pot and the action folds with us in the small blind and we see suited Broadway and again, a premium out of position. This time in the form of King 10 of diamonds and we wanna build this pot just a little and raise to 15. I'm quite happy with the quicker action as the big blind and the hijack both make the call, taking us three ways to a flop with 45 in. We get a decent flop. Okay, more than decent. King, king, six, two clubs. I really should just fire here, but I check instead. No need to get tricky or slow play, but hey, just telling it like it happened. The action checks through so everyone gets a free turn card, which completes the damn flush draw with a two of clubs. 
Now I should be checking, but again, whatever. I bet for $30. I think I mentioned earlier, I'm the fish at this table. The big blind thinks about the fishy smell coming from the small blind. Yeah, that's me. I think this time legitimately playing a little slower before deciding to raise the 65. This is the player that jam pocket threes on a paired board with two overs in the prior hand. So with that information, I make the easy call. And off to the grossest river that I've just ever seen. Another club. We check. He checks. We show. He mucks. And somehow we hold the scoop this one. In the next one, under the gun limps into the pot and we have another premium hand out of position in the plus one seat. Ace 10 of diamonds and we elect on a raise to $20. The action is starting to move a little quicker and the small blind makes the call as does the player that limped in the under the gun seat. We've got $60 in the middle going three ways to a flop. Queen, deuce, jack, no diamonds. We flop a gutter and one over and opt for a check out of position and the action checks through. I can rep all the queens and should be betting, but again, I'm the fish today. I like the turn when it comes an ace of spades, but bringing in a second flush draw and now giving our opponents the same gutter draw. I bet for 20 trying to see where we're at in the hand and if our ace alone is any good. We get one player out of the way and the small blind wants to see another card and makes the call, building this pot to an even $100 now. The river peels off, pairing the ace, but completing the front door flush draw. The small blind decides to donk lead this one for $30. Although it feels like extreme value, a big raise could put him in a tough spot since I was the preflop aggressor. I just make the call and he shows two clubs and he's gonna take this one down. Now we're on the button with the action folding to us we look down at 8-6 suited, a great candidate for our bluffing range. I like these suited one gappers when playing in position, especially with no action ahead of us. We open the action to $20, just needing to get through the blinds to steal this one. The small blind is a believer, but not the big blind as he decides to defend for 15 more. So heads up to a flop with $40 in the middle. At least we have position. King A7 rainbow hits the table and the big blind checks and plays in flow. Let's go ahead and play range here as we should have all the aces and kings and we fire a small bet for 15. In a spot like this, it doesn't take a big bet to get the job done. If he calls this, he'll likely call any size bet on this board. And call indeed is what he does. As we go off and see an eight of diamonds on the turn, now giving us third pair. He checks to us again and with a little showdown value and an opportunity to improve, I check back not wanting to donate any more to this pot. We do improve to two pair on the river with the six of diamonds but the backdoor flush also gets there and improves a lot of other two pair combos the big blind could be defending with like king eight, king six, and ace rag. Four five and nine ten also complete straights now. So although we improved to two pair, we could be way behind. So when he checks back to us, we're just checking back and we get to scoop this one up too. Small again, not getting additional value on what we perceive to be a horrible run out, but happy to scoop nonetheless. Out of position again in the small blind, we go set mining with pocket threes. We get no help on the flop and we check. Another player in the hand decides to bet and we have one option. We have to fold. The button, a newer player in the table opens the action in this one to $30 and we look at jack nine of clubs from the small blind. Yet again, out of position. Down to 800 in our stack and dying to get back to that double up amount, we decide to call. Although this is a 100% three bet spot, this is a leak in my game I need to close. My problem is understanding how to navigate a hand like this post flop after three betting if we whiff the flop. Under the gun calls behind us, so we go multi-way to a flop with 90 bucks up for grabs. We drill top pair on jack five six rainbow and both myself and under the gun check to the pre-flop aggressor on the button. He elects to toss out a single white chip for $100, over betting this pot. Weird spot with top pair and a mediocre kicker, but his $30 preflop sizing has me putting him on two overs or a middling pocket pair like sevens through tens. So we make the call. Under the gun folds and we'll be heads up to a turn with almost $300 in this pot now. The turn comes off the king of clubs, giving us flush draw outs now on top of our one pair. We check and he starts counting his chips. Cuts out what looks like to be a bet, then kind of act like he's gonna check back. Then cuts out chips. Anyway, 
He ultimately opts to push it all in his 165 he had behind. With a pair, a flush draw, and nearly four to one on a call, I make what I think is the easy call here. And we see a brick 10 of hearts on the river, improving him to two pair, although with Jack 10, he had us all the way. Like I said, I'm the only fish at the table. We count out our chips, pay him off, and move down to almost even on the session after that hand. Another gun opens this hand to $35. Another new player to the table and the action is starting to get really good. The hijack calls and we finally look at a hand we can play in position on the button in the form of king four of spades. We make the call and the pot builds to 110 with three of us off to see a flop. The flop looks grand in jack 10-7 with two spades. It doesn't take as long as DMV is now closed for the action to check around. Going to the turn, we drill our flush. We like the improvement with the nine of spades. And just a quick reminder to stick around to the very end to see what happens on the next vlog. All right, the hijack bets this one for 45 and hoping the third player will come along. I just flat, I don't want to raise just yet, but unfortunately we'll be off to the river only heads up. The river brings in a king of hearts and she bets $50 this time. I'm thinking she must have turned two pair like Jack 10, Jack nine or 10, nine, but now there's a four liner to the straight. So a hand like Queen Jack picked up equity on the turn. I basically min click it back with a raise to 110, hoping to squeeze out a little more value. And she pretty quickly opts to call. We show her our flush and she turns over pocket eights. She turned a straight and eight high flush draw. I imagine this fish left a little more value on the table. All right, guys, that's a wrap from Commerce Casino. Stay tuned to see what's happening on the next Happy Face Hold'em. We're down at Hustler Casino, one of our favorite places to play in LA, and we play like a six hour session, so we have a ton of hands to go over, so we hope to see you back for that one. Anyways, rare rainy day here in LA, rocking the Happy Face Hold'em. Pullover hoodies, you can get yours at happyfaceholdem.com. It's a great way to support the channel and support all your vloggers, not just me, but you know, support everybody. And thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all the support you've given me to get me over 3,000 subscribers. We're looking to 5,000 and just gonna keep cranking out content for you guys. Anyways, on this session, Commerce Casino, we played for about two hours. All the numbers are right there. We did squeeze out a profit. However, I would have liked to keep that, you know, $590 profit we had in the very beginning of the session we didn't get on tape, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, we always have a lot of fun playing. Two quick announcements before we go. January 9th, Hustler Casino Meetup Game. All the details are in the description below. The West Coast Poker Vloggers are bringing you a two, three, no limit hold'em game with a 100 to $500 cap. And then January 22nd, right here in Simi Valley, you can come see the happy face that's mowed right into the side of the hill. January 22nd is a charity poker event supporting the local high school baseball program. So I hope to see you there. I'll be playing in that tournament. All right, guys, until the next one, don't forget, wash your hands. We might need bail money with these guys lurking around. We get frisky with our favorite hand just for the vlog. With pocket fives, we're getting all the money in. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye.